Good morning. Welcome to St. Matthew's Lutheran Church. We're so glad you're with us today. To any visitors, we extend a particularly warm welcome. We hope today's service is a blessing and a comfort to you all. A few announcements before we begin worship. First, as always, our prayer partner is available here um, at the um, entrance to the church near the narthex over there to have prayer with you, to pray with you, or to pray for you. So we'll seek out a prayer partner. Also, we have um, a youth, a YAM, and King Street Kids activity this afternoon. And um, I don't recall the times in front of me. I don't have them in front of me. So just, if you have any questions, see, it's at four. It's at four. And see Daniel if you have any other questions. It's at Velocity at the uh, trampoline park. We also have um, youth news. The youth gathering participants will are, have begun making oyster, really neat oyster um, shell decorations for Christmas. And they're going to make those available for sale um, beginning on December 1st at our annual meeting and at our covered dish luncheon. You'll hear more about that in next week. This Wednesday at WHAM is our second annual chili cook-off. I think there are 12 or 13 um, participants now. It was a lot of fun last year. I encourage you to come. Please, um, to plan, will you sign up on the, the uh, weekly record on the back here? And after this week, we'll have one more wham until we break until January. The Baptismal Task Force has, will ha offer its first, um, its first session today, immediately following worship. And our next session will be on Wednesday. And then the next one, the third and final one, is next Sunday after worship. Next Sunday afternoon at 5.30 at Redeemer Lutheran across the bridge is a um, discussion about the upcoming bishop's election. You're, anybody's encouraged to go and hear about that election process and to say what you would like in the new bishop, which will be, um, whom will be elected in May at Synod Assembly. And if you, if you are going, please let Pastor Rebecca know so the folks at Redeemer can plan for everybody. We have some XYZ events coming up. The next one is Tuesday, and it is a, an event to work. It's a service uh, project to work on the Backpack Buddies. Education Board will host an appreciation breakfast for our parish education teachers on Sunday the 24th during the 8 o'clock hour. We do thank our parish ed teachers very much for all that they do for us. <clears throat> if you're interested in learning more about a potential trip next mid-June, June 2020, this would be to the Mediterranean, a Pauline trip. Please let me know ASAP so we can see if the trip will make. We're getting close to the number, I think. We will have a blood drive on Sunday, December 8th from 11 to 3 here at the church. It's going to be right in front of the church. That's a big Sunday. That's Advent 2, and it also will end just before our beer and carols that evening, our, jazz, our fourth Jazz Vespers event of the year. The points that are order form is in the um, is in your parish news this week, as well as a a handout remembering um, veterans Veterans Day. I do ask you to fill out your weekly record information on both sides. Are there any temple talks? I don't think there are. If there are none, let us turn our hearts to worship.
face the font at the rear of the sanctuary. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the strength of our ancestors, the host of this meal, the builder of the city that is to come. If we have died with Christ, we will also live with Christ. Let us confess our sin to the one who is faithful, kneeling as you are able. God, our helper, we confess the many ways we have failed to live as your disciples. We have not finished what we began. We have feasted with friends but ignored strangers. We have been captivated by our possessions. Lift our burdens, gracious God. Refresh our hearts and forgive our sin. Raise us to the new life you have chosen for us. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. There is rejoicing in heaven when sinners repent. Put your trust in these promises. God will never leave you or forsake you. You who are lost have been found. For the sake of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Rejoice with the angels at this good news. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
eternal Redeemer, by the presence of your Spirit you renew and direct our hearts. Keep always in our mind the end of all things and the day of judgment. Inspire us for a holy life here and bring us to the joy of the resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Job. <clears throat> oh, that my words were written down. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron pen and with lead they were engraved on a rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, then in my flesh I shall see God whom I shall see on my side, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. The word of the Lord. reading from 2 Thessalonians. As to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together with him, we beg you, brothers and sisters, not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as though from us 
to the effect that the day of the Lord is already here. Let no one deceive you in this way, for that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first and the lawless one is revealed, the one destined for destruction. He opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, declaring himself to be God. Do you not remember that I told you of these things when I was still with you? But we must remember always to give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters beloved by the Lord, because God chose you as the first fruits for salvation, through sanctification by the Spirit, through belief in the truth. For this purpose, he called you through our proclamation of the good news, so that you may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the traditions that you were taught by us, either by word of mouth or by our letter. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and through grace gave us eternal comfort and good hope, comfort your hearts and strengthen them in every good work and word. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 20th chapter. Some Sadducees, those who say there is no resurrection, came to Jesus and asked him a question. Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies, leaving a wife but no children, the man shall marry the widow and raise up children for his brother. Now there were seven brothers, the first married and died childless then the second and the third married her and so in the same way all seven died childless finally the woman also died in the resurrection therefore whose wife will the woman be for the seven had married her Jesus said to them those who belong to this age marry and are given in marriage but those who are considered worthy of a place in that age and in the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage Indeed, they cannot die anymore because they are like angels and are children of God, being children of the resurrection. And the fact that the dead are raised, Moses himself showed in the story about the bush, where he speaks of the Lord as the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now he is God not of the dead, but of the living, for to him all of them are alive. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise please be seated. Boys and girls, please come forward. And in, uh, let's, all of your choir is going to um, sing in a moment. So y'all stay there. And we'll have any other boys and girls to come here. And I'll just say a few words, and then you can do your, do your presentation. Is that good? Is that good? Okay. Just kind of gather around here. <laughs> So, have any of you had a bad, ever had a bad day? Just a bad day or a bad week? What happens when that happens? What do you do? 
You make the best of it. All right, that's good. What else? Oh, more. Come on. Come on. Hey, how are you? What else do you do? You make the best of it. What? You look forward to the next week because it'll be better. That's right. What else? What else? Sometimes we look for a word of good news, a word of comfort. So I'm reminded today of how we get those good words and words of encouragement. So the, the letter that Ms. Romnus just read is a letter that probably Paul wrote, and he wrote to this group of people, church, and he was encouraging them, making them feel comforted and encouraged and that things were going to get better. So I was thinking, if you were having a bad day or a bad week and you needed a good word, what would you want your friend or your family member to say to you? What's a good, something that makes you feel better? Caleb. What's wrong about it? So, yeah, so ask what was wrong, why it was such a bad week. Okay, that's good. What else? Sometimes just that they either send a note or call or just ask you that question makes you think, all right, I'm not alone and it's going to be better. That's what Paul was doing in this letter. That's what, that's what part of what church is about. It's about us being together in a community. And when we have those bad times, then we get these good words, these words of some of the most important news possible, that, that good news is just around the corner. And it's actually here, but sometimes we don't feel it. All right, you get it? All right, let's say a prayer. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for sending us good news of word and words of blessing and comfort. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. All right, so why don't you all come over here and watch the Hallelujah Choir sing. I'm going to stand out of the way.
Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And sometimes good news comes from singing children. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Over the last two Sundays, we experienced two of the most important worship experiences of the entire church year, right up there with Easter and Christmas and Pentecost, Reformation Sunday and All Saints Sunday. Reformation Sunday reminded us of our Lutheran theology that guides us along the way, particularly as we think together about Luther's ideas about freedom. All Saints Sunday tells us why we come to church. But more than that, All Saints Sunday reminds us of what our faith is all about. Those things we often think Christianity is about, love, mercy, hope, grace, forgiveness, servanthood, are all important, but they are secondary. Our Christian faith is about three words, death, then life. That's it. This man, 100% divine and 100% human, that's faith math. This man named Jesus lived, taught, was crucified, and died. Jesus did not pass away. Jesus did not go to be with the Father. Jesus died. Like the coroner Munchkin says of the witch in the Wizard of Oz, Jesus was not merely dead, but he was most sincerely dead. It was death. It smelled bad. People cried. But then something else happened. Our Lord got out of the grave. And that is what our Christian faith is about. Death and resurrection. Jesus was not only dead, but was dead and then alive. All the things over the years, the centuries really, we have heaped upon the Christian faith are secondary. Many are wonderful and spirit-filled and even part of the promise, like forgiveness and hope and love. But our Christian faith is a promise to bring life from death. Three words. Death, then life. Two weeks ago, I preached a Reformation sermon about freedom and grace. I used the image of a country breakfast with bacon and eggs and the complimentary grits that just come with it. You don't have to pay for them. You don't have to even ask for them. The grits just come with it. That's the grace part. Here's the thing. To receive the grits, you have to show up to the diner. <laughs> the grits come with it, but you have to show up to the diner. Like Easter and All Saints Sunday, today's lessons teach us about why we go to church why our Christian faith is written upon our foreheads and upon our hearts. Why we confess a belief in God that we cannot see with our own eyes. Our God is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. God is our Redeemer. Our God knows how to get out of the grave. Job's story, part of which is told in today's first reading that Dr. Otheson read, is our story. Human life is filled with joy and sorrow, abundance and need, contentment and hungry, good and evil. We, like Job, seek a redeemer, an advocate, someone on our side. Job's cry for God, a redeemer, is also our cry all these years later. And that is part of the reason we go to church, too. Paul's letter in 2 Thessalonians, today's second reading, also describes why we go to church. This letter, like other New Testament epistles, is a word of encouragement, a word to redirect and set things on the right path, a message to bring order out of chaos. This letter contains a message of Paul's encouragement to the early church to remember the teachings, the promise of Christ, the strength and the faith, and the comfort of the promise. 2,000 years later, we seek these same things from our own faith and our own community of faith. And Luke's gospel today speaks of that core message of our Christian faith, resurrection. That brings us back to all saints, Easter and funerals. 
On Thursday, I enjoyed a wonderful visit with Welka Four at Frankie. It's a standing lunch gathering we have each quarter. This visit, like the one last November, I led a, the group in an All Saints litany in which we remember all who had been baptized at St. Matthew's this past year and all who had died from the St. Matthew's community since last All Saints Day. It was a similar service to the one we had last week here. But after the gospel reading, we had a time of group reflection on the reading, the prayers, and the meaning of all saints. It was a bright spot in the day, I think. We talked about what our faith means to us and how that faith has changed and not changed over the years. We recall the saints who had made differences in our own lives. We recall the saints who are not with us anymore. We agreed that our part in this vast community of faith is all about gift and grace. We look back over the centuries and centuries and centuries of saints who have come before us at the lives of those who have carried us and walked with us in our own lives along the way. And we look to those saints who hopefully will come in the future to carry on the good news of resurrection. As you may have determined from some of the recent sermons and messenger articles and class discussions, I am preoccupied, concerned about the future of the Christian church in America. I shared a few of the numbers with you in that sermon and in the articles. The numbers are not encouraging. The American church landscape will likely change in this next generation in ways that we're not really able to imagine fully. I confess that I am so programmed and affected by the story of my own home church, a declining parish in Hickory, North Carolina. As recently as 15 years ago, some 225 to 250 people worshipped weekly. It was a thriving congregation, the place where my own family has marked weddings, baptisms, confirmations, funerals, the milestone moments, and the daily life of what it means to be in church. Mom and Dad say that now, on a good Sunday, the church may have 35 people in worship. What a fast decline it's been. There is a tipping point in any organization, that line in which any recovery is very, very, very difficult. For many congregations, this will be a point of no return. Church leaders suggest that we're supposed to view this decline as an opportunity for ministry. I don't disagree, but the writing is on the wall. In all of this, though, don't forget that message that I say to you often and I think is so core to our Christian tradition. Do not be afraid, but also don't be lazy and uninformed. This church, this American church, all denomination, is in critical decline. Resurrection, freedom, teaching, death, life, all of this points back to baptism. We remember that each week here in our worship. I take the sacrament of holy baptism very seriously. I take my call to administer those sacraments very seriously. Part of the administration of those sacraments is teaching about what these sacraments are and what they are not. I've been thinking much about baptism over the past year, and I'm more and more alarmed about the disconnect between baptism and discipleship, about active participation in church and in faith life that doesn't even happen here at church. Since October 2016, there have been 21 baptisms at St. Matthew's. Only five of those 21 newly baptized are active. The majority have not returned for a single time since baptism or have returned only a few times. Putting aside all the problems related to that profound disconnect, and there are many, I am convinced that the long-term decline of the church is directly related to families not following through with those baptismal promises, not opening themselves to receiving, receiving the gifts that God and community and Christ promise in baptism. Most are not showing up to the diner. Our baptismal team has developed a series of gatherings intended to welcome people into the community of Christ at St. Matthew's. It is a ministry intended to educate what baptism is and is not, including the promises that we make in this, that we all make in this sacrament. Most importantly, we will invite the newly baptized 
and their families into this gift that is this Christian faith. Your faith life should not feel like an obligation, something that you have to do to satisfy some rule or some pastor. Faith and community in, in Christ are gifts, and part of my job is to open that door for you. The diner is open if you're hungry or even if you just don't want to be alone. I have high expectations, and I do not apologize for that. I will not apologize for my high expectations. I clearly remember telling the call committee that I can be exhausting in this way. The stakes are high, folks, and this is all worth it, or at least I believe it is. Our faith and its teachings are worth it. This is a matter of death and life. And spoiler alert, I know how this will end. This is a battle I will ultimately lose. I know that. But you better believe that I'll fight while I can. I'll work to affirm those few things in our world that still matter. Our faith is one of them. I will pray and watch for a resurrection of our own lives, a resurrection of the church. At last, I am among those who do not know the future of the church. But I do know this. The church, at least the American church as we know it, will not survive with, without active parishioners who show up in meaningful ways. It does not matter how delicious and comforting and filling the grits may be. If people don't come to the diner, the diner will close. God's grace is amazing. God's promises are even more amazing, especially that thing about eternal life, that thing about life that comes after death. The grits come with it, but you have to show up to the diner. Thanks be to God. Amen.
let us profess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to the heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Sustained and nurtured by our generous God, we gather as one to pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation, kneeling as you are able. <laughs> Loving Redeemer, by grace you have chosen us to live boldly as resurrection people. Strengthen us to stand firm and proclaim the good news to the world. Lord, in your mercy. Maker of all, you bless us with a change of seasons. Create safe pathways as plants and animals prepare for winter. And make us good stewards of your bountiful creation. Lord, in your mercy. Divine Judge, your justice and mercy are revealed to us in your steadfast love. Grant rest and peace to our faithful veterans and give courage to government officials who lead, serve, and protect. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Listening God, your beloved people call to you and you answer them. Hear the cries of those who are poor and unemployed, those who seek refuge, those who suffer from addiction, and all who are sick, especially Kevin, Owen, Cheryl, Pat, Ellie, Carl and Maxine, Mary, Roslyn, June, Jean, Ed, Rosa, Connie, and all homebound parishioners. For Jimmy, Mike, Peggy, Jackie, Marilyn and CM, Claire, Marion, Julia, Jenny, Ron and Ina, Lillian, Lang, Mick, Jackie, Melissa, Mark, Philip, Donna, Patsy, Pat, Sandy, Lori, Rebecca, and the family of Maggie. Lord, in your mercy. Generous teacher, you look upon your children with a loving heart. Bless the ministries of those who work with, serve, teach, and lead children. We especially give thanks for the work of our Alleluia Choir. Lord, in your mercy. God of the living, you are alive. We give thanks for those who have died in faith and entrust them to your care, especially Maggie. Give us comfort in knowing that our Redeemer lives and that we will be united with the faithful in a resurrection like his. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Assured by your promise to hear us, we lay our prayers before your throne of grace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share a sign of peace with one another.
God, our provider, we bring nothing into this world and we can take nothing out of it except the gifts you have first given us, which we bring to your table and with them the offering of our lives. Nourish us now with the life that really is life. Reveal to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us be bold and pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus welcomes sinners and eats with them. Come, take your place at the feast.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. 
God of blessing, at this table we have seen you face to face, and in the gift of Christ's body and blood, our hearts have been refreshed. Send us now to shine with your goodness and bear witness to the one we have received, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Almighty God, by the power of the Spirit, you have knit these your servants into the one body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Look with favor upon them in their commitment to serve in Christ's name. Give them courage, patience, and vision, and strengthen us all in our Christian vocation of witness to the world and of service to others. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us now and forever. to celebrate, grow, and serve in Christ's love. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Amen. 